This video and this project made possible by my awesome backers over on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash evilviking13 to support the channel and get some cool behind the scenes rewards along the way. Hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil, Evil Viking 13 here, back for another new secret Fallout build. It's time for a tour, so I brought Joel back. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joel. He is uh, the winner of our Fallout settlement building competition, so you're kind of an expert now, I think. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you win one, you won them all. So I technically won last year's <laughs> you first. You won all of them, <laughs> and then I won all of them again. Makes sense. <laughs> Today, Joel is my first settlement tour where I am not actually General Dave. This is also not a Minutemen settlement. Okay. Today, we're gonna find out what horrors await in the depths of Vault 88. I wish I could rhyme every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna explain who I am here in a minute, but first let's jog over and see what the entrance looks like because it's a very built up and protected entrance because I'm the leader of a faction that's been living here for just over a year now. And our faction is a bit mysterious, but we're known for protecting the Commonwealth from the horrors that lie from where Vault Tech dug too deep before the war into the depths of the bedrock here under the vault. Notice all the protective gear I'm wearing and how completely built up this entrance way is. Let's see if I can figure out what the flashlight button is. There we go. Yeah, no way in from this side. And also notice that it's almost like it's protecting you from things from the inside, not just the outside. Mm -hmm. Not so much a do not enter as trying to keep things from uh, from getting out. Although also do not enter because <laughs> your head can end up on a pike. So. And when did you start building this? Was this after you were inspired by my ultra mega immersive build? Uh, too? This was outlined last fall. I moved it up in the list after you dropped the immersion bomb on me. <laughs> I was like, I gotta come out swinging. <laughs> like, this is an idea I've wanted to do for a while because it's gonna be very, very different. Um, I actually need to walk carefully around the spike traps here. Any guesses, Joel, for who my faction might be Al affiliated with? That was right in my crotch. <laughs> like, Whoa. I'm having no mutant kids now. <laughs> this yeah, is super slow. Michael Jackson walk right there. Yeah, this is our uh, our protected entrance way to the underground here. Don't mutants open it? Oh, don't open mutants inside. Gotcha. Do you get that one, Joel? It's a little Walking Dead reference. Rick. When he first wakes up in the hospital, there was that oh, yeah, double yeah, door yeah, chain, yeah, yeah. and someone painted, don't open mutants inside on the two doors, but it read as, don't mutants, well, it was zombies, yeah, dead, yeah, yeah. I think it was. So this is my riff off of that for, <laughs> for the Fallout 4, uh, don't mutants open inside. <laughs> so again, it's almost like we're trying to keep things inside, and also keep people out. Do you have any guesses, Joel, which actual Fallout 4 faction this settlement might be affiliated with. Um, okay, is it um the Radiation people? The Children of Adam? Yeah, Children of Adam. It is not. Let me set off the trap here so I can get by. <laughs> As you can see, some people have not stepped very carefully through here. <laughs> Notice all the protective gear that I'm wearing? Look at my face, Joel. Are you a ghoul? I am not. In fact, I am probably oh the exact opposite of a ghoul. I am one of the few survivors of the massacre at the Pridwin. I'm a Brotherhood of Steel survivor after General Dave and the Railroad took down the airship. <laughs> I am one of the few remaining leaders. I'm actually now the Elder. Um, I am James Hudson, one of the last surviving officers who just smelt his hand <laughs> uh, of the Pridwin. And as you can tell from the scars and the burn marks on my face, 
in my crazy eyes, I have seen things. In my personal playthrough of Fallout 4 in the main quest, uh, I sided with the Minutemen and the Railroad, and so I burned the Brotherhood's ship to the ground. And for this settlement tour, I am actually leading the survivors of that attack, the few survivors who have been hiding underground in Vault 88 for the last year or so, hiding from the Minutemen and General Dave and the Railroad. Man, it's only been a year. How long in the crap has General Dave been building all of a sudden? He builds fast! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Brahmin have died. <laughs> a lot. So really, what we have here is uh, really just a made-up story about mutants underground. It's really to keep the Minutemen away. The only people allowed past this entrance are a few trusted traders who are allowed into the interior of the vault. <laughs> Lots of security. <laughs> However, no one is allowed, unless you're actually a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, past this initial courtyard for security reasons. So if you're a traitor, one of the few trusted ones, you would come out here, and the gate would be sealed. You're allowed to drop off your food or your supplies, which would be traded for scraps, and then you're back out of the vault. Again, no one besides actual Brotherhood members are allowed past this courtyard. Okay, because I was... Huh. So how do you keep the, the secret, of the, or that it's just supposedly all ghouls, so that the Minutemen don't hear about it? Or do they just think it's a raider base or something? The only flag here that's flying is that one Brotherhood flag, which is taken down when anyone who's not a member of the faction is coming to trade. And again, we have a very short list of approved traders. Mm. And... For anyone who's not in the survivor camp here of the Brotherhood faction, we keep up that story of there's Deathclaw Nest, there's Rad Scorpions, there's massive uh, populations of ghouls. So even traders are like, I don't want to go past the courtyard. Like, these walls are keeping things inside of them, like to protect the outside. Uh, our story is basically that we live here because it was available space. And we've got some very, very tight security. You can seal that hallway up completely and then the vault is secured also got a pretty good supply of robots on guard There's like a little roving tank right there <laughs> and some converted vault tech guard shacks overlooking the entrance my character elder Hudson is essentially the Darth Vader of the faction notice the suit I'm wearing it's basically keeping my skin attached like all that fire from the blimp crashing did not do good things to me. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> barely keeping me alive. <laughs> and that gate almost killed me. <laughs> Going inside, we have essentially built an underground city, a survival camp, in Vault 88, using both scrap found in the vault itself and also bits of the, uh, the incomplete vault itself. We have an entire city built here under the ground, hiding from the Minutemen. Got some vault supplies there. All of this stuff is built with supplies that we could have actually found down here for, you know, for my immersion. For instance, a lot of the housing is boxcars from the vault Tech trains that come in from those tunnels back there before the war. And we've raised them up and put them on raised platforms. If we go up here, you can get a overview of what our underground survival settlement looks like. If I can turn it around there, it goes pretty far. And this is what some of the upper class areas might look like. So maybe you're a sergeant in the Brotherhood. You've survived the attacks. Uh, maybe you were out on patrol, thankfully, when the Pridwin went down. So you've got a room that you only share with a couple of other people. And even though Elder Maxon is dead, gotta remember, he did his part. He died for you. So the Brotherhood needs food, coolant, oil, and spare parts. And remember, anyone could be a synth. No dirty synths did you allowed. Make that uh, it actually came in a really nice side mod that lined up very well for the settlement. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, this would be your um, your lodging if you were a little bit higher. Ooh. Elders' rights to take any bottle caps that might happen to go across. I'll put that in the general fund. <laughs> the general fund, as in like 
in general, not yeah, <laughs> not not the cursed general. <laughs> Damn him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can see across there, there's a lot going on down here. We've been here for over a year. We've been busy building, too. Uh, the idea being that if we can just build our forces back up and make contact with the Pentagon, which is the capital of the Brotherhood of Steel on the East Coast, which we haven't been able to do yet, we can get reinforcements and hopefully assassinate General Dave and take back the Commonwealth. But until we can actually make contact, we're essentially on our own here. If one of these guys contacted me in the game. Ooh, now, wouldn't that be a double cross? I allowed you Pleasure Island. Yeah. You yeah. helped the Brotherhood. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, that would be an epic. <laughs> now, a big part of building up our forces is we've converted what was a construction uh, kind of headquarters here for the underground vault before the war into an emergency battle hospital. And while there's no patients here right now, this is where a lot of the other survivors of the attack on the Pridwin or the attacks on uh, various Brotherhood patrols around the Commonwealth have come to recover their health and get back into the fight. It's got some, you know, decorations like some paintings, but for the most part, it's a bit more business-like than the generally pleasant Minutemen's elements. I mean, General Dave loves his propaganda, don't get me wrong. But I also like nice things, whereas the Brotherhood is mostly like, alright, you get one weird modern art painting, and uh, get well soon, but also smash the prostitution racket, <laughs> and uh, it's all about getting our Brotherhood knights back on their feet and back into the fight. Not many of us actually survived the attack, so uh, we're definitely trying to build things back up here. Got our lead surgeon in his brotherhood so scientist cool. outfit waiting for his next patient <laughs> the very sanitary wooden surgical chair <laughs> but also a much larger surgery center to take care of again all those wounded from uh, from all the attacks a lot of this stuff has just been repurposed from what vault tech had yeah. here when we first found the vault now, a question Joel you haven't asked me yet is do you remember who was in charge of Vault 88? I thought it was a, a, a ghoul, I thought. A ghoul. So, we're going to meet her in just a little bit. She's still alive. The Brotherhood of Steel has actually convinced her that they're the successors to Vault Tech because of their love for technology and uh, basically just their show of strength. But the Brotherhood itself does hate ghouls for the most part. So, her days are numbered. What's keeping her alive? is as the actual overseer of Vault 88 from before the war, she has access to all the original blueprints and supply stash locations and the access codes for the reactor. She's been smart enough so far to ally with the Brotherhood but not give over the actual codes. As soon as she does, we're going to kill her. No ghouls in the Brotherhood. It's not pure. <laughs> Speaking of things that aren't pure, the Brotherhood has fallen very, very far. This is the bathroom facility for basically the whole city. Notice the storage barrel there. It's just a glorified ramshackle outhouse, essentially. The power cycle. <laughs> uh, that would have been that would have gone right into mine, just as perfectly. Like bolts in there. Who gets the last sheet? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Space at a premium. Battle Royale over the toilet paper. <laughs> oh, man, that's an awkward angle if you're on that one, like, looking up into the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> like, hope you remember to close that curtain before you sat down. Oh, look, it, look there's a gap there. All oh, the smells just come running down to you. Oh, I'm sure none of this smells good at all. You were inspired by my build, Dave. This has been on the list for a while. I can show you the Google Doc timestamps. <laughs> sure, sure it, the idea was on the list, but all this design, mm-hmm. Huh? Hey, sometimes you just gotta steal from the best. You gotta copycat the best. <laughs> sometimes you die slow. <laughs> sometimes you wish it was fast. Whoa, hey there. Oh. This is one of the walls overlooking the outside of the camp. Of course, the vault is huge. There's tons of space, but to keep the area secure and to make sure that the Minutemen aren't gonna you know, come in from a different entrance and, and just charge in. 
we do keep the walls very, very secure. Now, if you want to actually eat, you're a Brotherhood survivor, you're not a knight or the new elder like I am, your job during the daytime is to go out and scrap. We've got a converted train car here with some wooden ramps. So you'd get this with all your pals, grab the handles, and you would lug that into the depths of the vault where, to be fair, there are some pretty horrible mutants down there. Like I think I got hit by a, killed by a death claw down there. Yeah, and there's also tons of rad scorpions and actual ghouls. So it's one of those things where like the story isn't completely made up, but uh, it's really just to keep people out of the uh, the survival city. <laughs> They're everywhere. Let's check out some of the poorest housing. So let's say you're not very good at scrapping. It wasn't what you were trained to do in the Brotherhood. You would probably be living up here. I imagine like housing is probably free, but you definitely still have to pay for all your food. Uh, and if you were just a private in the Brotherhood, you'd probably live in uh, group housing like this. It's uh, not the worst in the world. It's better than the latrine. Well, it's also above the latrine, though, notice. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you were on this corner here, where they <laughs> attach it to the vault supports, uh, the fire is probably just to keep the smell out more than anything. <laughs> Some games for what little downtime you have. I think there's uh, this Joel's board game, Nebula from Hell, <laughs> a pack of vault cards, and some bobbleheads, and some duct tape for crafting. You know, just some light evening crafting. General Dave would approve. And I also have what I call the uh, the Harry Potter bed here, <laughs> under the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and from up top, you can get a better view of the city. Or if you're lucky, um, maybe you might have actually claimed this bed kind of by itself. Hopefully that fire barrel is enough to keep you warm. Because I got to thinking, like, with these high ceilings down here, it would probably get kind of chilly underground. Oh, yeah. So there's lots of fire barrels, more for heat than for light. Yeah, you can get a look over the city here, built onto the train tracks with this incomplete section of Vault 88 right there. So let's head past the hospital. Let's close that gate up too now that the Elder is back home. <laughs> Slam! <laughs> the notch comes down. This will be the last area that we tour. This is where the Elder and the Brotherhood Elite stay. It was the only part of Vault 88 that was actually completed when the war broke out. It was designed as like an inner sanctum uh, hmm. for vault Tech employees. Um, not the Overseer necessarily, but just uh, some of the higher ups who would be in the vault. This is a gift shop. <laughs> Brothers steal of a gift shop. <laughs> it's not actually a gift shop. Basically a sign that someone found out in the wasteland. And it is a, a trading location, so they just kind of threw it up there. We do have the emergency siren in case of attack. And from the vault Tech warehouses down here, a vault Tech guard booth yeah. that overlooks that entrance. You can see everybody coming in. I mean, that is quite the firing lane right there. Uh, if a non-approved trader gets through all the traps, or just a, you know, scavenger, they're going to die a horrible death. And then some extra weapons ready to rock and roll. You can actually pull those like right off the board and use them. That's cool. Now most of our food does come from trade, but we are growing just a little bit of crops down here. You can see the grow lights we've got going on. Uh, our Brotherhood survivors working away. I imagine it would be super tasty, it doesn't look that great, but you don't want to be completely reliant on oh, outside yeah. food. Um, no one down here is living the Minutemen life, you know? There isn't food on every table. Well, purified water in every bottle. In the Minutemen, there isn't food on every table. There's food only on the general's table. <laughs> There's food for everybody. Down here, <laughs> down here, that. some people have actually starved to death during the, uh, the leaner times. After the loss of the Pridwin, this was basically the notice board where you would put up, like, you know, missing persons from your unit and that 
kind of thing. And then eventually someone just spray painted after months had gone by, everyone is gone. Because most of the Brotherhood did die on the attack on the Pridwin and the ensuing battles between the Brotherhood uh, and the Railroad and the Minuteman and the Institute there at the end. It was a, a whole big mess in the main, uh, in the main quest. And because of the loss of the Pridwin, as you might imagine, General Dave is uh, very hated, along with all <laughs> of the Minutemen. Put a spear through. You, if you remember, Joel, I actually mentioned uh, at one point that, yeah. oh man, all my settlements have to have the Minutemen statue. So it still rings true today, <laughs> just in a very different way. So, which way do you want to head? Left or right? Uh, left. Left? Alright. Here on the left we've got our general store. This is run by the Brotherhood Command. No one it's um, what's the word for like a, a military no general store? Like a uh, complete Commissary blank. or something? Commissary, thank you. Go. So it's military run, but again, if you're not out there in the dungeons of Vault 88 yeah. bringing in scrap for the Brotherhood, you're not going to be allowed to buy things here. Like You have to actually pay for stuff. Notice that even the guy running the shop is wearing a vault jumpsuit because there's a lot of them around. If you want to buy actual Brotherhood armor and protective gear, you know, what? for... Some, that's the Brotherhood armor. Oh, yeah, man, jumpsuit. armor is awesome. That yeah, that's like the Brotherhood, uh, I think, uh, scientist scribe armor? I with a join them. With a gas mask. No, you shouldn't have. They're terrible. They're, they're Fallout 4's Nazis, Joel. Which is why I killed them all. Why? They have all the best why weapons. Why? Yeah, which I took off their dead bodies. <laughs> Here in the center of town, you've got an entrance into the side of the general store with a community notice board. Anyone could be a synth. Report strange behavior. Is that a legit one? Uh, these are some modded posters okay, from a yeah, really great sign mod. Freaking Terminator. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's from the synth concept art, maybe? Huh. It's pretty scary looking. Uh, but here in the window, you can see in the general store, he's like working on some uh, some gear that's been brought in by scavengers and Brotherhood uh, workers who have been going out and finding some mechanical bits and stuff. He's working on this motorcycle. Also, quite a bit of nice weapons, if you can pay for them. These belong to the Brotherhood as a whole. Uh, so if you want one for yourself, you've definitely got to pay for it. I wonder how and the general store here is, uh, it's just tucked, like, right up against this boxcar. Making use of the space that's here. Which actually makes for some pretty great storage for all the scrap that's coming in. That's cool. This is what's going to get the Brotherhood back on their feet. Scrap. <laughs> and he's got, like, a, a workbench back here for working on some I of the guns and stuff. Very ramshackle shack, but built right into the boxcar. That door opens in, apparently. <laughs> Speaking of ramshackle, notice the converted flat car in the center of town. I can't decide which would actually be the cheaper housing. Uh, would it be this, or the shack over the latrines? I don't know, I gotta always see inside, because if this was you, Dave, you're on, you're on a train car. Which is pretty cool, but it's also very, very crowded. Ow. Um, it's also in the middle of town, so I imagine it would be kind of loud. Like, people are, you know, talking and walking around all night long. I like this. This is really nice. So this is uh, a modified flat car with some bits Did of aircraft. Did you do all those beds on. and everything? And yeah. And stuff? This was a, a completely flat, flat car. Wow. Uh, before I got my hands on it. And actually, the flat car wasn't even here. It was like a vault box boxcar full of boxes. I was like, ah, I already got one of those. So I have a mod to let me actually place the uh, the flat car, and I built this on top of it. Got the broken fan going there. It's also very bright in here. <laughs> All the metal and, and lights. Got some playing cards and a lantern ready to go out. And scrap, scrap, scrap. It's got their teddy bear. Some storage under the beds. Then a little bit quieter back here, perhaps. Past the second door. Oh, and it looks like Elder Hudson just caught somebody hoarding glue, probably sniffing it. That's an infraction. They're going in the brig. 
Wings over America, Brotherhood of Steel Air Corps. Did you place it there too? Of course. I built this whole <laughs> thing, Joel. Well, I know you built this whole thing, but that just seemed so what the crap? <laughs> <laughs> you added in things that other people did. Uh, I like it. <laughs> Next up, we have kind of the communal section here. The center of town. The 100 Rads Bar. If you guys are stalker fans, you'll recognize the location from the bar in Stalker. Now this is one thing I did unashamedly steal, Joel. Notice the dining area. Your lanterns on the <laughs> tables. That was a glorious idea. <laughs> so I've got this ramshackle kind of um, no, dining and just like communal drinking area. You got a music box over here ready for some hollow tape tunes. Someone's enjoyed some coffee. <laughs> Wings over America. Remember our triumphs now that we're underground and hiding. <laughs> <laughs> well, the moles under America. And for this section right here, I definitely went all out with the lighting. I wanted uh, a very dramatic light for the bar itself, so I used one that actually casts shadows to create a really cool effect back here. Oh, she looks really offended that I'm touring the area. <laughs> I'm trying to work here. Yeah, there's a lot of detail back there. You've got food storage, you've got a drink machine, you've got uh, an ice box, fresh coffee. Golly. Fresh coffee. You put all those bottles on the right side? Oh, yeah. You can just sit at the bar, just ponder your existence, your underground, barely alive existence as a member of the Brotherhood's survivors. I feel like she's really judging me for not working during the day. Like, why aren't you out there scrapping? <laughs> Nuka noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, a wide selection of drinks here. There's like vodka, ware brew. I don't even know what that is. Some fresh kebabs right there. Again, fresh. <laughs> And then back here is a little bit more of the housing where the survivors are staying. Definitely made use of all the cranes down here to get some of these boxcars up off the ground to make use of space because we wanted to enclose the whole thing in protective walls. So sure the vault area is huge for building in, but if you want to actually stay hidden, we wanted to actually be able to seal the whole area in. So we've kind of built up. Hmm. You see lots of rickety canvases and wires and electricity not super well built but at this point we're kind of just glad to be alive also someone's not doing the bar's dishes <laughs> much like a Minuteman settlement there are tasks to be done someone ought to be doing them just, just hearing you say those things is kind of like oh, that part's coming up that's part I put those dishes in just to say that <laughs> I'm so immersed! <laughs> I am so immersed! Speaking of immersion, a lot of people did not make it out of the hospital. So, this guy... <laughs> <making coffins. laughs> it's a full-time job. He's making coffins 24-7. Uh, a lot of people have died even after the main battles. We were burying people originally outside of the walls. That just attracted more mutants from underground. So we actually bury them inside the walls now. So you get a coffin. We go up the platform here. I'm gonna pass by some more housing. Built all the way up the walls. Super rickety scaffolding. It's like leaning up against the railing on this one. You gotta drop down on this one? Yeah, you gotta like hop. It's just like stacked right there on the railing. <laughs> and you get a overview of the downtown section here. You can see how it's all kind of built uh, in a rickety way in between the different rail lines Yeah, for the uh, vault tech underground. Let's see if I can jump. Up there. there we go. So this is kind of the uh, premium suite, if you will. So maybe you're uh, opening that. Uh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, like there's no actual railing on this part right here. <laughs> so hopefully you're not tired. Um, <laughs> Those guys are stupid. 
<laughs> Notice the lack of safety first posters like a Minuteman settlement. <laughs> they don't care about your safety here. That would validate the general so much. Like, oh, Fallen Off Rails? Gee, I wonder if, my, if they had more of their posters around. To remind you, yeah. yeah, yeah. Elder Hudson says, screw your safety. We need scrap to survive. <laughs> yeah, you can just tell it's uh, not as cramped as the um, the shack and the, the rail cars. You got a bit more room, some furniture of your own. A lot of the furniture that you're going to see is going to be vault furniture because we are in a vault that was being built and it kind of makes sense. A reminder of home, the capital wasteland. Not even hung correctly. <laughs> How would you hang a painting on a boxcar? <laughs> well, if he's got a hanging, he could have made it work. He's also lazy. <laughs> We'll head down the scaffolding here, and we'll see our last residential area. You can see we got some firewood stacked up for the many, many fire barrels. I imagine we have to import so much firewood uh, to keep all these barrels going. Oh man! Along with just burning. I wonder how much of the Vault Tech like wood stock we're just burning at this point to keep things you know warm. Because look how high that ceiling is down here. Like it's got to be so cold without those fire barrels. But this Vault Tech passenger car, which is a really cool idea, by the way, Bethesda. I love all these, like, staff trains for the underground. Notice all of the wood and metal sheeting that's been put up. It's been converted into residences. But also here, on this construction crane, we have the discipline area. <laughs> for if you get too many infractions. Criminals will be arrested. Filth will be exterminated. Brotherhood of Steel. Now, Joel, do you remember this guy? Clem? Uh-uh. When the Minutemen yeah, first discovered this settlement, he's one of your first eager volunteers for all the vault uh, experiments here. Mmm. Okay. Now, in my playthrough, General Dave showed up, looked around, did the experiments, left, and never came back. I just literally forgot about the place for so long. So when the Brotherhood arrived after the loss of the Pridwin, Clem was still here waiting for his next assignment. And so he uh, joined the Brotherhood. His next assignment is to suffer. Well, that's the problem. He's not a true disciple of the Brotherhood of Steel way. So he's been great as a scout for, like, going out into the wasteland and, you know, make contact with traitors and stuff like that. Uh, that is traitors, the D, not, not with traitors. <laughs> he's, been, he's been talking to traitors. <laughs> but that actually is the problem, is we caught him talking to people he was not approved to talk to. And our biggest threat down here is being discovered before we're ready and like strong enough to fight back against the Minutemen. So just by talking to people he wasn't supposed to be talking to, even though it turned out okay, he's now being publicly punished. He violated that trust, so he's going to be up here for a solid week of punishment. But yeah, over here we have, I think this is actually one of my absolute favorite residential areas, not just because it's on a train, because of how I use the train space. It's got some really cool lighting and stuff inside. You've got little lounge area up front, a very secure door, but it's kind of cozy, actually. We just hung some bunks down the side of the passenger car. That's cool. So again, it's, it's you know, it's crowded, but I'd say it's probably one of the more cozy locations to uh Yeah, and there's not much quarters. to do in here except for sleep, but... I mean, you've got comics to read <laughs> on the that hard metal bench. Sign me up! <laughs> Okay, enlist, your country needs you, sign you up. <laughs> and here at the end of the car we do have uh, one last room, um, probably again for like sergeants and stuff. Uh, it's bunk beds, but it's got some privacy, uh, some more awesome comics. Literally awesome though. Literally just awesome comics. This is easily as crowded as some of the other ones, but it's just a little bit cozier. Let's head down here. <laughs> you close it early so the do door just kind of pushes you out. <laughs> it works. It's more efficient that way. <laughs> uh, this guy is hoeing the walk path for some reason. Got a few more crops back here. He'll be here. fired soon. <laughs> He'll be in the stocks next. We need more stocks. <laughs> we need to find some more of those down in the vault. <laughs> Uh, these crops, as you can tell, aren't doing super well with a lack of light down on this end, but um, 
over here we have the detention center and some more graffiti looking forward to our revenge against the Minutemen this guard tower here just basically I fell right off the edge there uh, yeah. looks over that front entrance like the firing lanes into this front section would just be an absolute massacre. Even if the Minutemen attacked, if they attacked to the front, would even General Dave survive that is the question. I think the only way you could take this base down is if you literally nuke the top and you just brought the whole thing down. <laughs> just down the collapse the whole ceiling. Yeah. Huh? yeah, I don't think Elder Hudson has prepared for that scenario, the nuclear attack from the top. But here in the detention center, which is actually where our overseer, who is, she's the ghoul, is not allowed to go. We are keeping anyone who wanders too close, or <laughs> any traitors that show up and are ghouls. Like, we don't trust them to keep our secrets. Uh, humans who are allowed to show up, we trust, obviously. But she was originally a traitor who uh, heard this group underground and wanted to come, you know, offer to trade. Instead, we seized her, and uh, she's been... Uh, here ever since, basically. So we're torturing information about the Commonwealth out of her, and once we're done, she'll die. Notice the blood spots. There have been other ghouls and other prisoners from the railroad and from the Institute that have been here before her. Anyone who stumbles across this place does not meet a happy end. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> and then from uh, this rickety railing right here, we have this cool old water tower for all the trains that we've built a little watchtower on top of. Let's see if someone's up here. Ah, oh, that's one of our robots. Identity confirmed. This is <laughs> essentially just called Hunter Bot right now. Uh, he or she has no actual name, but this is a bot that we're building to assassinate General Dave. So when we make our move, this is the bot we're going to send in kind of quietly. Uh, it's got the Assaultron legs, so it can move a bit quicker, <laughs> even with the gigantic camera. So if we truck back on this way, see our botany center for all of the, uh, the knife just stuck in the table, for all the plant growing. See this just ties around That's to... <laughs> now leasing crappy rooms in the middle of town. <laughs> See all of our uh, crops being harvested here. <laughs> Even though. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine like someone brought that back and they're like, oh good wooden scrap, we can use that. And then someone like smuggled it out like, no, we gotta keep it. It's so cool. <laughs> like, we have no joy or happiness left. Keep the gnome. Spare the gnome. <laughs> no joy or happiness left. So if we turn to the left from the 100 Rads bar, come back here to the back section. This is the scrap depot where all of our poor brotherhood survivors and privates who aren't important enough to do scientific work here inside of the settlement, they have to go out and get that scrap. This is where you turn it in for caps, which you can use to buy your food or whatever else at the, uh, the commissary. And a reminder of how important this is. A vertebrate requires 306 pounds of rubber. <laughs> yeah. You've got the register right here. A couple of employees who are checking over the scrap that was brought back. Looking for anything uh, old world electronics especially. So we want that power armor. Uh, which most of it was lost when the Pribbon went down. There's that entire power armor section on board. So we're especially looking for any kind of metal or electronic scraps to rebuild yes. our power armor. <laughs> we got some bits of, uh, of scrap there in the darkness and uh, the clock, the work clock. Now if we look behind us, we've got a little communal campfire where you bring your shopping basket full of scrap. <laughs> like a hobo like pushing a <laughs> cart full of scrap out of the depths of the vault. Uh, leave your basket here for the next day. It's also nice and convenient though. If that scrap isn't going to the general store, it can come right over here to the power armor workstation. Cut that light on. And this, surprise surprise, is where the Brotherhood of Steel is trying to rebuild 
their army's power armor supply. Uh, got some tools on the ground there, some oil, and a blowtorch. That's the uh, actual Brotherhood of Steel T-60B power armor. It's a little bit worn down, but we need all that we can get. That's cool. The lighting looks cool. Yeah, the lighting here is, uh, again, I love these spotlights that cast shadows, and because I'm underground, I had more memory overhead to use more of these. So it's definitely a very, I love the, the shadows there. It's like... Plus that power button makes a very satisfying sound that you can't hear. It's like, chunk. Got a lift jack right there. To our left, we've got another one of our robots. This one is... Identity ah, the Pridwin's Revenge. <laughs> He's ready to rock and roll right there. Uh, laser and Gatling cannon, I think. He's got a great overview right here of one of the other entrances to the camp. Identity and if confirmed. we go down, this notice all the turrets. Well protected. Some things don't change. <laughs> it's kind of like you're almost the same person in a way, but more authoritarian. Like, I'm an actual Brotherhood fascist leader. I mean, this guy's a little bit nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, but... <laughs> Look at him, he just looks so mean, though. At least you know he's mean. You, you have this giant fake smile that says, please, we'll take care of you until we decide not to. <laughs> I won't lie, General Dave's smile is pretty freaking terrifying. <laughs> Back here is where we're burying our fallen. Like I said, we used to do it outside the walls, but it just attracted more mutants. So it's getting a little bit crowded back here. Lots of people dying off from the poor diet. Wait, <laughs> someone has a, has a skull on his. Oh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> grim. That's really grim. It's like the most generic. <laughs> it's the most generic cemetery stone. It's like, <laughs> we'll be I, together I soon. His, I don't even know what his name is. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. And then a... Uh, inscription of actually the names of some of the dead hmm. I like that. chalked on the side of the train car here and for you guys that are Red Dawn fans you'll recognize that list of names hmm. from the memorial rock at the end of the movie so you're mixing two different immersive cultures do you not believe in easter eggs Joel? because my immersion loves a good easter egg oh nice so if you found a, like a spongebob reference in Witcher, you'd be totally fine. <laughs> and ruined. <laughs> so this is actually a list of real Brotherhood of Steel members <laughs> who died in combat with no relation to anything else. Pretty yeah, cool, right? That, like That's what I thought personally. I spent a yeah. lot of time making sure that all these names, you can find them all on the Fallout Wiki. They're mm -hmm. all members of the Brotherhood of Steel. And that is not to be questioned. <laughs> And on we go. <laughs> Moving on quickly. <laughs> we're going to head back to this main section right here. Uh, and we're going to check out one of the other incomplete vault areas. So moving past our scrap town here. We've got this incomplete section of the vault. With the working nuclear reactor. Before we go check that out though. Let's check out where our poor survivors have to shower. This was actually going to be one of the uh, plumbing systems. Excuse me. Thank you. Okay. This was going to be an underground piping section. And it's now a very grimy, nasty, rusty bathhouse for our Brotherhood survivors. You can see the old water pipes here. That's cool. And uh, this last watch one. Watch your head. Yeah, watch out for the metal studs. This comes out at the scrapyard here. That's cool. For basically all my settlements, whenever possible, I try to build structures out of weird things so everything's not so boxy. So here you've got a structure out of like old rusty pipes, um, the smaller pipes, container crates. You've got some of the wire meshing, some crazy looking rooftop pieces, anything to break up those silhouettes and make it look, you know, more unique. Yeah. And over here, 
Got yeah. some more Vault 88 armor. Not a lot of the Brotherhood stuff survived the main battles last year. So, we're using that Vault stuff wherever possible. That is another entrance. Hop down like that. Out of the Vault. I think that one goes to a train station eventually. It's like a kilometer down the tunnel though. But just in case we are prepared for an attack in this direction with turrets and fencing and guards at all times. It's kind of built like underneath that, uh, that vault section. So yeah, that's our guard area, and this is where the Brotherhood of Steel is working on all those new robots. Uh, only got three so far, because a lot of that best electronic scrap is going to the power armor and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, that is where we're building them. This is where our reluctant ghoul overseer stays. Again, this was one of the few areas of the vault that was somewhat complete before the bombs fell in the original war. So we kind of just let her keep this area. It's like a self-imposed exile. She doesn't really bother the Brotherhood, and we like let her pretend like she's still in charge here. Until it's time to kill her. So this has got mixes of some completed vault tech stuff. Got some nice wallpaper. This room below the reactor room was meant to be uh, like a staff break room. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of decorated it with some of the vault furniture that was in storage as uh, her personal quarters. It wasn't quite finished yet, though, so for the incomplete section of the flooring and all of her hey, time. Where did you find that carpet? That's cool. Oh, yeah, it adds, it adds to the effect of the. That's, uh, I'm guessing, a modded one. Or not a modded one, but one that you, like, unlocked. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're. Where it wasn't complete here, she's kind of built this overhang into the incompleted vault structure to make it uh, a little bit more roomy, a little bit more homey. So it's like certain lighting in this game makes things look really real, like the teacups and stuff, and the wooden table, like, you know what I mean? Like, Thank you for noticing, Joel. Because I used a very specific modded light that cast real shadows, which is very, very expensive render-wise. Yeah, like, this, th looks this room really looks really so nice. much better with shadows compared to without. Um, yeah. I thought so too. <laughs> I'll just see what it looks like without shadows. Don't worry about it now, but I'll make a cut here and I'll insert a quick clip of what it looks like before I switch the light out. So when it oh. had just the flat lighting. And seeing she was down here for 200 years by herself, it's been a lot of lonely Christmases. Which is kind of sad when you think about it. I'm really sad if you think about it. <laughs> I wonder how many times she's like read all those books and stuff and like walk that. Walk past and go, yeah, thumbs up to that person. <laughs> and uh, how many hours spent on the power cycle? A lot, based on the cracked seat. <laughs> Very worn. <laughs> Got a cool view of the uh, middle part of the city out there. Over here, she's got a uh, pit boy and some Vault Tech lunch boxes. Your various Vault Tech accessories that you would expect an overseer to have. But again, that room was actually supposed to be staff quarters, like a break room. Because one of the first reactors, besides the main one that was installed in this vault, was installed up here. And this is why she's still alive, honestly. The reason that I had not killed her as the elder of the Brotherhood is because she will not give us the access codes that control this reactor system. And this one reactor right here is really what's powering most of our underground city here. Hmm. So without this fusion reactor, I mean, we're already in bad shape, right? Yeah. Imagine where we would be without any electricity to uh, continue our experiments and stuff like that. Uh, she's kind of holding a lot of the cards still, but one day, one day, the Brotherhood is going to take care of our little ghoul problem here. She's got her overseer's computer she's tapping away on, you know, checking inventory and supplies and all this stuff, while the Brotherhood really controls this place now. Uh, and that'll change again just as soon as we have access. 
to this computer the population management system and the control of the nuclear reactor. She's got all the tools she needs up here to keep an eye on how things are going behind the scenes. You know, maintain uh, a watch over all those power levels and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, maybe we should actually have her train some people before we kill her too. Like, that's that's a lot of buttons. I would have been already torturing her. Well, that's the problem, is uh, she's got a dead man switch on the reactor. If she doesn't put her code in every 48 hours, it shuts down. Hmm. She holds all the cards for now. And once we have some backup power in place, then it's time for the torturing to start. And we'll, <laughs> uh, we'll get those codes from her. The Brotherhood of Steel never really messed around, but now that Elder Hudson's in charge, uh, I'm not going to cut any more corners. Like, we're barely holding on here. If we're going to fight back and actually take out General Dave, we're not going to hold back. Back here, below that partially completed section of mm -hmm. the vault, we've got our back wall that leads to the northeast sector. This cool little spotlight here. That's where the ghouls crawl through. <laughs> Which is a great target for the turrets. Someone's slacking from their watch. Got this rickety watchtower here. <laughs> you can see everybody that's coming up those stairs. <laughs> Which is usually just some very, very sad, hungry uh, Brotherhood survivors is with their scrap. <laughs> it's usually all that spotlight sees. <laughs> that's actually a, uh, a gate right there. So, before we go into the Inner Sanctum, the other part of the vault that was completed before the war, uh, kind of a holdout shelter for the Vault Tech Elite, any thoughts so far? Um, I really like, you know, how you use the space and everything. Um, I'm a little confused on how to get around a little bit. Um, there, it's, you don't have as much of, like, some of the other builds, like, where there's kind of, like, a central area and, like, the pathways go, or at least if there is, it's kind of hard to see one, like, set piece, but it's kind of neat, it, but it, I feel like it adds a lot to, like, them just kind of surviving and stuff, so I like that a lot. It's definitely very crowded. I can go to yeah, the free cam, yeah, and, yeah. uh, you can kind of get an overview. Like, I have no idea where the entrance of the main place is again. Right there. And it's actually, a big part of it is how tall everything is. Like, all the sight lines yeah. when you're down on the ground are really crowded, but if you look yeah. at it from above... Whoop, to the wall. <laughs> Not too above. <laughs> yeah, this is what it looks like. And the main part of the build is based on those train tracks. So if you look, there's there's where all the pathways go in between the trains. Gotcha, yeah, okay. But they also built uh, structures in those pathways, so it is very, very crowded. But uh, I, th you know, I, I think I know what I know what it is. Is on a lot of the other builds, you had a lot of stuff on the ground, like little like walkways or uh, mm -hmm. like the wooden things. You don't have as much on here because there is so much thing, so much everywhere else. That that made it a little bit more confusing to kind of track where you are. But yeah, there actually there are. If you look, there are wooden walkways. But you're so used to them now, you didn't even see them, did you? Well, I mean, like you have them between areas, like they, like certain ones like connect yeah, yeah. to areas. You know what I mean? I got you. It wasn't as obvious, I guess. Yeah, that's what our underground survival city looks like. Yeah. And this might be a good time, Joel, to show you guys what it looked like before. I'll do a quick save there. So, again, there is the overview of our city. And we're going to run the Scrap All command, which will scrap everything, including a few minor things. Like, there was, like, one section of door that was here. Yeah. Uh, this will give you guys an idea of uh, what I've added to this build. Probably a few thousand objects. Gosh. So, yeah, this might actually crash. There we go. This is more or less the before. And Jeez. Yeah. There's a lot going on. I left a lot of the railroad pieces, like they were the tracks and a couple of those box cars there. And that remember the one uh, passenger's car that I turned so into. So how did you clear stuff out? Did you do it manually then? Exactly. So I scrapped yeah. certain things, like one box car here or one box car there. So you did it manually one at a time. Mm -hmm. uh. Because I wanted some of those box cars to be like, oh, we took this one off the tracks, raised it up as like one of those bunk houses. Dude, I hated that part of our challenge. <laughs> just, I it took about an hour. Yeah. Just, just to tap, 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 tap. Whew. All we have left as 
Elder Hudson wraps up this tour of the Brotherhood survival area is where I actually stay, along with the officers, <laughs> the few of them that are actually left in the Brotherhood. This was going to be, like I said, the Vault Tech kind of employee area. It's kind of and so, uh, just the plebs of the Brotherhood are not allowed inside. This is where a lot of the research is going on. Uh, we're trying to yeah. get this old Vault Tech conveyor belt going. Right now it's set up to build just Vault Tech suits. That's where all the guards' uniforms are coming from. That and storage. Trying to convert it over to make some weapons because we're a little bit low on weapons. We've got a couple of good like Goss and energy weapons, but for the most part, if we're going to take on the Minutemen as huge as they've gotten, we need some serious weapons. So we're working on uh, a couple different ways of, of making some of those. Got our officer always on duty yeah. to check your ID and to make sure that if you're not allowed in here, you are not allowed to stay. Occasionally, I, as the Elder, will give a speech in here, and people can gather for the platform. But, uh, for the most part, unless you're an officer, you don't get to come in. <laughs> very, very much like General Day. <laughs> I feel like these two guys would actually get along quite well. Really? Yeah, I mean, almost... <laughs> <laughs> Almost everything you do in this sounds exactly like your general day. Like, how, how so? Only officers allowed in here. All you do that so many times in your general day areas. It's like this is only where the high officials go. <laughs> the crappy, the crappy latrines. You think this company would be all like, okay, if you made it inside our vault, you're considered one of us. We're gonna build or something. Well, how, how much like, time? Like high class and low <laughs> class here too. I'm like just like General Day. I wait for him to peel the skin back in his General Day. How much time did you spend on the Pridwin though? Like things are very military and organized. Like oh yeah. Now for my settlements uh, as General Dave, that's just how General Dave wants it. Here it's it's more of a military thing. Like. You don't go hang out in the officers' quarters. This is the officers' quarters. No, no, quarters. no, yeah. But it didn't seem like there was as much of a high class and a dirty low class. Now, I'll chalk it up to the fact that they're surviving. Yeah. So I'll give you that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's like, can't go in here, always on duty, constant. It's just so rigid. Imagine that Joel is like, you know, the privates always have to do the terrible jobs like clean the latrines. Well, now you're barely alive, so all the crappy jobs aren't. Well, there is clean the latrines. There is that still. Don't worry. <laughs> but it's also things like get scrap so you can build power armor to not yeah. die as soon as you leave this hole in the ground. Like, yeah. it's a lot. And that's why I think you, this guy and the General Dave, would literally get along super well together. Yeah, probably so. If the, well, fight, if the battle hadn't happened already. Because if you were to compare notes of like, oh, oh, you do that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Are we brothers? <laughs> but as you can see, I don't think we'd actually get along. There's a lot of tension here. We've never met. We got our scientists here, who when they're not yeah. researching are staying in shape. <laughs> With their whole suits on. <laughs> That's gotta be sweaty. <laughs> uh, you've got the bunk area here. Very cool military style Brotherhood bunks. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I do just sleep in one just like one of my officers, uh, even as the Elder. Is that where the ladder actually goes? I don't know. I think I put those there actually. Yeah, I kinda like well, go to the side. Yeah. yeah. We're all very strong. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, General Dave. Uh, excuse me, Elder Hudson. Elder <laughs> Hudson, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Elder Hudson. Look at, my, look at the facial, look at the anger. Dave, you can look at the model all you want. <laughs> we know the, the, the scaly lizard inside is General <laughs> Dave. <laughs> He, so he wants to consume General Dave with a oh, holy yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this back door, which is locked to keep, you know, the uh, the man out of the officer's quarters. There, there we go. go. Nice. What? This door opens up. Powerful. <laughs> yeah. Opens up to that back gate here. Oh, okay, cool. With nice the vault connection. area. Um, here's your Dark Souls connection. Yeah. Your, your back door. And uh, seeing this was going to be that kind of all-inclusive atrium inner sanctum for the vault Tech employees, although there's no shower facilities, they did make good use of space. We got some storage underneath the stairs there, but also the power some hidden bathrooms under the stairs. Such nice bathrooms here. 
if they just work just a little bit more, they can make those outdoor bathrooms so other people don't eventually hate the leader. These were already here is the main thing. Like, you actually just find these. Okay, they just found this. Yeah, this is the vault Tech Atrium, the Inner Sanctum. And they brought all their, their Brotherhood of Steel posters in? Which ones? All the various ones you see, like... Oh, I'm yeah. sure that there were some at yeah, the uh, the police station and stuff like that. Just boxes of posters. <laughs> they also have yeah. a much nicer kitchen space, and the leadership cooks their own meals. I and mean, they'll go hang out at the 100 Rads bar occasionally. I mean, you compare that to the 100 Rads bar, which is, I mean, very atmospheric. This is uh, much more elite, as the Elder requires. <laughs> a matching mirrored bathroom. Nice. Vault Tech is uh, nothing if not efficient. These freaking bathrooms to I would do so long to do because these stair pieces here yeah. I had to like put bracing around to seal all the gaps. These pieces are like shrunk down, resized. The door had to be like resized and arranged. I love the idea, but about 30 minutes into the first one of these two bathrooms, I was like, I hate myself. Why am I doing this? Anyway. <laughs> For the last part of our atrium, one thing that Elder Hudson managed to do before he took the role of uh, leadership uh, for our Brotherhood survivors here was he managed to actually recover Elder Maxon's coat, but um, decided that probably shouldn't wear it. Kind of disrespectful, you know. Uh, this was his custom armored coat. And also the fact that seeing my skin's trying to fall off, I should probably just keep my protective suit on. <laughs> Yeah, so I managed to save the coat from the burning wreckage of the Pridwin after General Dave had killed Elder Maxon. Nice little music set. And this is one thing, this is our latest accomplishment, and why we're pretty convinced we're actually going to have a chance against the Minutemen. Those of you guys that watch my uh, Nuka World videos as General Dave, Gonna remember, I was trying to get inside of the space station inside of Nuka World to get at this uh, Nuka Quantum X01 Mark V power armor. I've been working on trying to get inside that thing for like. Yeah, you gotta find all those microchips. Yeah, you have to find all of those stupid fusion or star cores to get in. I couldn't find them all. So, the Brotherhood heard that General Dave was in Nuka World trying to get inside at that power armor, and as soon as he left, they moved in with some of their scouts and got to it first. So this is one of our biggest accomplishments uh, since the battle for the Pridwin, is we managed to steal this quantum they power armor. While I was there alone. <laughs> you missed everything. You know how many different weapons General Dave kill, uh, carries at any time? But there's time? like 30 guys here. Uh, the, see, that's the thing though, Joel. 30 guys could sneak out to Nuka World to get this power armor. All you armor. need is one. One sniper shot. Joel, I've taken a fat man to the back of the feet and survived. <laughs> General Dave is a beast. But this power armor, along with that hunter robot, these are going to be the keys in actually assassinating That's a creepy armor. General Dave. Yeah, it's it like a bug face. super, super creepy. And also, as part of the atrium, there's our oxygen scrubbers right there to keep the air clean. Thank you, vault Tech, for your thoughtfulness. We have our Brotherhood flag and a falcon. Yeah to remember the Pridwin. It's our remember the Alamo moment, if you will. One day, I'm gonna exchange this horrific Darth Vader space suit that's keeping me alive for that power armor. We're gonna smash down the gates of Sanctuary and we're gonna kill General Dave. And that, Joel, is our tour of the Brotherhood Survival City at Vault 88. Awesome. Where is actually Vault 88 on the map? It's very far south, towards the swamps. It's south of the southern. <laughs> Southernmost. Yeah. That's cool. Now, usually, guys, we do a attack on uh, whatever settlement we're touring to test the defenses, watch all of my fancy turrets go into action. But today, we're going to actually do something a little bit different because there is some deception going on here, not just with Joel, but with the Brotherhood survivors here. Hmm. What do you think is going on, Joel? <laughs> I have no idea. For those of you guys 
that watched my I'm just excited for a twist. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you guys that watched my let's play of the Far Harbor DLC, you're gonna remember General Dave was wearing Maxon's coat for much of that DLC. There's a reason for that. I am not Captain Hudson, who became Elder Hudson. I'm General Dave. <laughs> Of course, of course it's you. I infiltrated the Brotherhood <laughs> under the guise of a survivor of the wreck of the Pridwin. And to do so, I have been coming back by in disguise. Let me bring up my... Let's take off my helmet here. So, strangely, Elder Hudson spends a lot of time out in the Commonwealth scouting and gathering supplies and trying to contact the Brotherhood. And there's a reason for that, and it's because I have to constantly go through all of this elaborate plastic surgery and disguises whenever I come back to assume my role. That is actually General Dave under all those fake scars and <laughs> fake nose. I infiltrated the Brotherhood, and the reason that I didn't just wipe him out immediately is I wanted to let all of the survivors of the Pridwin gather one by one together one nice neat little community what we're going to do today is instead of testing the settlement's defenses I'm going to take that new power armor and I'm going to kill every single last person at this settlement <laughs> nice I like that general day I always knew it was you the whole time I knew it Fuzzy's just looking at the building. Ah, oh, whoever's in charge of this place. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Today, General Dave puts the final nail in the coffin of the Brotherhood in the Commonwealth. Shall we? <laughs> yes, let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting for this moment for the last year. And again, now that everyone's all gathered up, let's activate our light there. Oh, that looks nice and oh, evil. Oh, that's cool. Who should we start with, Joel? Like, oh, what, why, why is that guy in there? Who should we start with? Dude, drop down on him. Can't you do that crush attack? Ah, uh, yes, I can. <laughs> Guess who? No, oh, you're gonna want to do better than that. <laughs> Dang, what gun is that? The grease gun. Dude, freaking use a melee weapon. Just do that. It's time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, one thing I want to do first. Oh, here come the robots. I need to move pretty quick, actually. I'm going to shut off the power. So that they really can't tell what's going on. Hopefully the overseer. Don't move. I don't want to have to kill her. Okay, she's running away. You guys blow it up. Yep. And now the power's out. Now Joel, we hunt. <laughs> do you have a chainsaw? Uh, I do have <laughs> the general's personal sword. <laughs> it's poisoned. Oh god. The extra suffering death. Alright, now I am going to have to worry about these robots because they are pretty powerful. Um, let's see. Go for the settler first. Two amazing shots. <laughs> Where'd that robot go? I'm like level 102. This is going to be a massacre. Hey, don't you have a grenade launcher or something? Don't. You don't have like a nuclear launcher or anything? I don't actually. Uh, I'm doing this personal like Joel. Oh, this is our other guard robot from up front, Victorium. There is no victory for the Brotherhood here. Look at the screw arm. <laughs> this massive drill. Auto inject a stim pack. Let's figure out where. Someone's back here. Oh, it's the other bot. Keep your heads down. I'll 
I'll go around and finish it off. Don't move. Back, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no tears now. Only dreams. Oh, that power guy on the <laughs> That power <laughs> looks so evil. You guys punch him. Oh, disarmed him. Ugh. That was like a slap with the hill. Alright, who's left? Oh, look at you. Oh, Clem got out of the stockade. You fool. You should have run. Oh, <laughs> oh it, like poisoned him. He picked up someone's Gauss rifle. And... Now he's dead. <laughs> he assumed the position. And he's using a pistol. <laughs> oh, it's just blood everywhere. Who's firing back here? Oh, did you see him like stumble back in fear? Yeah. That, uh, confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine hitting power armor. Oh! oh! That was cool. You like grabbed him. Ah! Uh, well, more of that's gonna happen. <laughs> that's for the statue. <laughs> <laughs> Who's left? Oh, we got our bot back here. So long. Twisty move there. I am having to go through a couple of stim packs here. Oh, there we go. Hunterbot wants some. Now's your chance, buddy. General Dave's right here. What are you gonna do about it? Charge up. Do it. Charge it! Oh, nice. I like overheated it. I think we have to get up closer for that one. I'm not doing too much damage down here. Joel, should we show mercy to the old man? No, chainsaw, chainsaw, or whatever you got. <laughs> I mean... He's got, like, Joker hair. Yeah, he's kind of terrifying. <laughs> no, I love that. <laughs> the poison. Actually, I might have something special for him. There we go. Pippin's blade. Oh, gosh. Blade. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna have to get up closer for that one. Let's go ahead and take care of him. Looks like the ghoul's escaping. Yeah. Oh, don't fight me. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I imagine this is pretty terrifying to be in the middle of, even if you were a prisoner here. Yeah, because that person at least was staying alive via all those people. Shut down. <laughs> That's a lot of nut shots. Oh, someone's in the guard tower. Chuck a grenade. Do I have any grenades? Molotov cocktails, just chuck them in there. I also have... Oh, yeah. Flare gun? Let's call for some backup. Will they actually come in here? I'm not sure, honestly. But the flares look cool. I think the siren's going off, too. It's going down. Those flares look awesome. Ah, uh, there's one gun I was looking for. There it is. General Dave's new favorite. <laughs> the law. The law. Someone Stop help. trying to fight me. You were a prisoner. Oh, she's actually running away. That's that's kind of cool. That's right. Back inside. We're safe. Easy now. Hands up. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> he surrendered. Yeah, I, I would too, buddy, but... I'm sorry. Oh, dude, all that blood. That was pretty grim, actually. That's it. There's one more person that extends to that other person. Notice how the turrets aren't attacking me? Hmm. They're programmed to recognize me, even as General Dave. I turned their settlement against them. Wait. 
sure there's no one left alive. Lights out. Where are you? Found you. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Sure, topped off here. Ah. Oh. Oh. Got one shell left. Oh, you think you can stop the power armor, huh? Oh, that was a pretty good ragdoll. <laughs> that, I think, uh, is it. I see a few more contacts. I'm going to make sure, unlike the Pridwin, no survivors. Oh, I bet it's uh, just our overseer hiding up top. I'll let her live. And then our ghoul prisoner. So our two ghouls are going to be allowed to survive. But all of the actual Brotherhood members are all dead. Easy now. Hands up. Shh, I'll let her be. She's no threat. <laughs> so, guys, that is my Brotherhood or was my Brotherhood survival settlement at Vault 88. Bodies everywhere. <laughs> Well, now I feel so validated for everything I was saying earlier about how this place kind of felt like it was run by General Dave. Because it was! It was! I went through so much plastic surgery to pull off this heist. <laughs> so much horrible, horrible surgery. So you basically killed that dude and then turned your light, you turned into him. I killed him and I took his dog tags. And I'd actually been a member of the Brotherhood up until that point. So I knew his whole story. I knew his full name, where he was from, and all that stuff. His rank. And so... Uh, I ended up pretending to be the highest ranking survivor of that battle. In reality, it was General Dave with Elder Maxon's coat the whole time. <laughs> so what do you think, Joel? Nice, dude. I, I love that you're, you're turning your General Dave into the most bloodthirsty guy ever, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, it was, uh, there we go. She surrendered. <laughs> um, it, it was a grim quest, like, uh... I had decided pretty early on that the Brotherhood was going to die because they had asked me to raid my own settlements, and I was like, that's just not happening. <laughs> First of all, that didn't go against the story in the game, it went against your immersion. <laughs> exactly, like, <laughs> when when the Brotherhood uh, uh, Quartermaster said, I need you to steal food from the settlement, I was like, I was just building there, like, I'm the general of that faction, like, you jerk. Uh, so the writing was kind of on the wall there, but even then... When it came time in the main quest, that first attack on the Pridwin, though, just slow- This is something you don't tell your people back at home. They're just, oh, we haven't seen the Brotherhood at all. Yeah, it's just like, oh, I, I heard that someone wiped out that settlement. The, it was the Brotherhood survivors. Oh, man. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about them now. Because <laughs> if you notice, I was wearing power armor the entire time <laughs> during the attack. And uh, so even the survivors here, she surrendered finally. Nope. I put my gun away. She's going to run away. Uh aren't going to know for sure who I really was. So even the survivors, our two ghouls here, uh, won't be able to tell tales of yeah, General no Dave's revenge. So I'm just going to leave this burning rebel behind. Hope you guys have enjoyed the tour. For all of you that have been asking for a brotherhood settlement for like the last year, hope this is what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, guys. Joel, thanks for coming out. As always. See you guys next time. Take care.